there's one perception that our criminal justice system operates on a crime control model and then it also operates on a due process model. The idea of the crime control due process model is highlighted by the Supreme Court where in many cases where they talk about a police officer's right to arrest somebody, where they talk about what's appropriate for inter interrogation and interview techniques, when they look at what's appropriate for arrest and detention, they notice that the government has a vested interest in making sure that they can protect and secure their people. So they've got to look at what is the government's right during this offense. At the same time, the Supreme Court acknowledges that every one of us have an inherent right not to have an intrusive government overwatching us. So what they try to do is they balance out this crime control model with this due process model. Now, for a simple definition, a crime control model looks at what is the end result of the offense. We don't really worry as much about did we do everything right up front as to the legality of the stop, the probable cause for the arrest, uh, possibly, you know, the legality of the search. What we really look at is did we catch the bad guy? Did we get a confession? And then did we get him incarcerated? Because the main goal of the model is to make sure society stays safe and secure. The other model, the due process model, is basically the opposite. What it looks like is everywhere through the process, from the first interaction with a police officer to anything that happened at the police station to anything that happened in the lower courts, were any of the individual's rights violated that could have got a coerced confession or a confession that would not have normally been obtained if the police didn't go outside the judicial system. What the Supreme Court looks at is we've got to maintain a balance to where the government has its rights looked out for, but at the same time, each citizen has its rights looked out for. So if you, if you envisioned a set of scales, and on one side you had a due process, on the other side you had the crime control, when you start saying, or at, the, at least the court starts saying, say the crime control side going down, that the police seem to have an advantage and maybe they're infringing on constitutional rights, a series of cases will come out to where the Supreme Court will make sure that they look at the due process side and maybe rein the police back in on coercive techniques or something like that. On the same side, when we look at something like the 9-11 towers, where we said we were hated, we were weighted heavily on the due process side, you could see the courts come in real heavy on the crime justice side or the crime control side with a bunch of laws that maybe after a while we'll have to start backing off of. But for the time, we're more worried about safety and security than we are about the due process of an offender.